If I knocked my water over, ten of you would jump up, clean it up. I'd have ten more glasses of water before I knew what was happening. But if somebody spills it at home, I remember when my kids used to spill stuff. What is the matter with you? Can't you do anything right? I am so sick and tired of you making a mess every time you sit down at this table. You are a mess yourself, troublemaker. And you messing up the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, a ministry of the apostles which began the ministry by preaching the truth, the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you messing up all this now by deceiving people with your lies. I mean... Don't make you work too hard for the... And see the audience, she's playing for the audience. She's trying to please the audience there. She's not pleasing the Lord Jesus Christ. She's not called to please the Lord Jesus Christ. She's not even have any permission pleasing the Lord Jesus Christ being there. So she's got permission from Satan to deceive, and that's what she does. And, look, and see how she plays for the audience, and listens to the audience, how they respond. That's how the devil did it in the uh, Garden of Eden. Devil played exactly what Eve felt like to do and felt like disobeying the Lord and her husband by eating the fruit, which was forbidden for them to eat. So serpent was nice to Eve to deceive her, to rebel against God. And this trouble Micah female there only to please the crowd for whatever reason she has. Well, the main reason is to deceive because she, she is the, the servant of Satan. That's who she is. He's anxious. So she brought her husband up on the stage. They've got a bucket of water. So they've got a, a sauna session for washing his feet. So his feet obviously dirty. He came to church dirty, smelly, stinking like a dog. And uh, they had no water, no water at home, or they saving money on water, so they uh, got a bucket in the church, filled up with water, and now he sits on the chair there, and she's with the towel. So she brought the towel, and she's there to wash his feet. All right. Do things for one another. I asked my wife, I think once, darling, do you want me to wash your feet? <laughs> and she looked at me with, with the, such a strange look and said, well, we, you didn't want to wash my feet all those years. Why did you decide to wash them now? She said, I love you anyway. You don't. You don't need to turn me, turn me on this way. Imagine me coming there now with a bucket of water. Hello, ladies. I'm here to wash your feet. Lift up your skirts. A little bit higher than your, your, knee, your knees. And I'll begin. 
If I would go through all the aisles with but one bucket of water and wash all the ladies' feet and ignore all the blokes, after they would call the police on me for and charge me with discrimination. And then later, they would take me to court for giving all the ladies fungal infection, washing the feet from one bucket. Yeah. They would pick on me for sure. It's because people stop doing little things for one another. They stop. Little things. I do a lot of, lot of little things for my wife, and not little. Most of them, they're all big things, not little. Washing my wife's feet. Now I'll do more than that. Don't worry about that. her husband anyway. He's a spectator. He's nobody there, just a spectator. And uh, her, his, his wife is uh, yeah, minister. What about, what about other spectators in the church? Why didn't you go with the bucket to all the, through all the aisles and wash everybody's feet? Huh? Why did you only choose your husband. <laughs> fight come, uh, fight without works is dead. What about all, all uh, other people in the audience, all the couples or all the strangers? Did you did they bring all the buckets and start washing their feet in the in the church by, by following your example? Why not? We used to go to one of the Pentecostal churches and when there is a, a supper day they bring buckets it was not a very big church they bring buckets and when they start doing that me and my wife was um, going out just to wait until all this uh, uh, you know show it will finish and uh, they, they bring mops, water all over the place, the big the mess, complete mess in, in the church. And they're washing their husband's feet and then, then their husband washing their wife's feet. And then they have a uh, Lord's Supper. So it's why, why it's not happening in, uh, at, at, at your congregation? And there's no Bible. She doesn't, doesn't give any verse. She's got her own. And she does just whatever she wants. There's no authority from God for doing anything what she does here. Absolutely none. So she's her, her own God. I love you. Well, it's good to love him. If, if you're not gonna love him, he will find someone else to love him. So you better love him. Now he's getting turned on. <laughs> That's charismatics for you. See, it's not a church. It's a Jerry Springer show. It's a 
Ellen DeGeneres show, it's Oprah Winfrey show, it's just a show, it's not a church. That's the way it is at home, you give them an inch and they take a mile, right? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear. Now they're starting arguing. What's this got to do anything with the with with the church? This is just a carnal, fleshy, perverted stuff which this perverted troublemaker brings into the church. Dry her own feet. Now she's going mad. Now all the demons start started boiling inside of her. Because she realizes now that you know the manifestation of God little has little present there. She realizes how, how devilish she is and how wrong she is in what in what what she does. She, she, she went mad. Lightsabers are finally a reality, and you can own one. This new military flash. All right, enough of this. Washing feet. John chapter 13. John. Thirteen We'll start from verse four. He rises from supper and laid aside his garment and took a towel and girded himself. Took a towel. So the Lord Jesus Christ had a towel with him. So this troubled Micah, she had a towel as well. So she followed that. Verse 5. After that, he poured his water into a bison and began to wash disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel therewith he was girded. So the Lord Jesus Christ did the washing. No one else. Disciples didn't wash each other's feet. Only the Lord Jesus Christ does the washing. And disciples feet. The Lord Jesus Christ didn't bring Mother Mary or anyone else, disciples. That's the man who was following the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the apostles. The Lord Jesus Christ's apostles. In the movie Passion of the Christ, even Mel Gibson has more wisdom than this perverted troublemaker Joyce Meyer. Jo uh, um, Mel Gibson had a movie in the movie Passion of the Christ. Uh, Jesus, he was playing the role of Jesus Christ, was washing feet of the apostles. No one else in the church only the ones who were following the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 6, Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter says unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Apostle Peter was amazed that the Lord Jesus Christ 
tried to wash and washed all the disciples' feet. And he came to Peter. And Peter re responded with asking if the Lord is going to wash his feet. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know it thereafter. <laughs> what a response. Do you think troublemaker Joyce Meyer would understand this verse? The devil got no understanding and the devil has no gift of interpretation. The devil is dumb and this charismatic perverted followers of Satan showing their foolishness have did this troublemaker in this video which he promotes on social media. What I do thou knowest not now. So washing of the feet, that's 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 not the, what the Lord Jesus Christ meant. Everybody who says uh, the Lord Jesus Christ washing someone else's feet, it's all obvious. But the Lord Jesus Christ says, no, you don't know what I'm doing. What do you mean, Lord, you, I, I don't know what you're doing? You're washing, you're washing my feet. But now the Lord Jesus Christ says, no, nah, you don't understand and you don't know what I'm doing. Now, what I do, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Verse 8, Peter says unto him, thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. So if the Lord Jesus Christ not washing your feet, you don't have nothing to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ has to do the washing. And this washing is the washing of your heart. If your heart is dirty, all your body is dirty, your feet is dirty, no matter how many times this perverted troublemaker Joyce Meyer washed her feet and wiped it. Doesn't matter how many times. You're still dirty. I mean. Chapter 13 Verse 14, if I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also have to wash one another's feet. If I then, your Master, Lord and Master, have washed your feet, the washing has to be from the Lord Jesus Christ, no one else. And why do you need to have clean feet when you go and spread the gospel? Because your walk has to be clean to go where you're going to represent the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why your feet has to be clean by walking. I mean, fifteen. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. The Lord Jesus Christ gave us example.
And this example, what the Lord Jesus Christ says here, the whole truth is his example. And for you to go and present this truth, you've got to have clean feet. The Lord Jesus Christ gave you the why. So to walk on that why, you need to have clean feet. And what after the why is? The truth. I am the why and the truth. So you have clean feet when you have the truth. If you don't have the truth, you're all dirty. From your feet all the way to your head. And no matter how many times this perverted Joyce Meyer will wash your feet, you're still dirty if you don't have any truth. I mean, verse 20, that's a conclusion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. <laughs> See? The beginning, washing your feet, and the end is to God. The Lord Jesus Christ does this. He's preparing you for the ministry. So when you begin your ministry to God and spread the gospel, you've got to have the why by which you walking with your clean feet. I mean, he that receives whomsoever I send receives me. So the Lord Jesus Christ sent me in 2004 to Hillsong Church to represent the truth. And then when I walked in, I had my clean feet because my intention was inside my heart and the Lord Jesus Christ knew that because he sent me to present the truth, which I witnessed at Hillsong Church. And the Lord says, he that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. So all you perverted devils, if the Lord Jesus Christ will send someone to represent the truth, you're supposed to receive him, not the opposite. by against receiving it rejecting it if you reject the truth you reject the Lord Jesus Christ and you reject God the Father who sent the Lord Jesus Christ to this earth to present and give the truth to the apostles for them to continue with their clean feet. I mean, Romans 10 15. This is the meaning for having clean feet. In Romans 10, 15. And this perverted troublemaker would never open and say this in the church because she's got a satanic spirit and she led by Satan. I mean, Romans 10, 15. And how shall they preach 
except they be sent. See the preparation for going to preach? I came here, I had to have had I had to have clean feet to come here to this room. The Lord Jesus Christ sent me here to present the truth. I, I'm waking today. I just got a lunch break. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, you having a lunch break, go and tell the truth. I'm sending you. So for me, I had to have clean feet to come here. I didn't go and wash my feet. I didn't go and ask my wife to wash my feet. I have clean feet. Because I have a clean heart before the Lord Jesus Christ. So if I, if I, if I have a clean heart before the Lord Jesus Christ, everything is clean. I mean, and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful, beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. Beautiful, clean, washed with the purest water there is your feet of them that preach the gospel of peace see when you preach the gospel of peace when you preach the truth you preach the gospel of peace when you preach lies you preach the gospel of hide there is no peace in, in your lies you perverted troublemaker Joyce Meyer. There's no peace there. And that's why you went, went mad at the end of it. Because there's Satan boiling, the demons boiling inside of you. I mean, preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things good things that's the truth of god and evil things that's the lie of sight i mean and it's written and this is written in isaiah 52 7. isaiah Seven. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. Good tidings. That's the truth. The truth of the Lord. That's the good tidings. And evil tidings. Evil tidings, they're not beautiful. They're ugly. That publishes peace. The troublemaker, female, woo. Woman. See, she's a woman. She wants to be a man, but she's a woo woman. You'll never be a man. We are one in Christ Jesus, but you'll never be a man. You're woo man. You cow. Cow never 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 be a bull. Cow will remind cow. 
Amin. That publishes peace, that brings us good tidings of good, good tidings. That's the truth of good. So you bring in, you bring in all this perverted stuff there of bad, of evil. That's what you bring. You perverted troublemaker. That publishes salvation. See? That bring us good tidings of good publishes salvation. You publishing damnation. The voice that says unto Zion, thy God reigns. See, when you, pu you publish salvation, the God reigns. God reigns in my life, inside of me, in my heart. God reigns. You devil going mad here at the end with your towel in your hands, throwing your towel and saying, wipe your feet to your husband. There's a Satan rhinus inside of you. I mean, the year 2023. Remember this number, Proverbs 20, 23, buy the truth and get rid of all lies. And this troublemaker, deep voice Jewish Meyer, is the 